Welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today I need to restock my triple butter bars. I've made these several times here on YouTube before and every time I ask if you want to see remakes, the majority of people say yes, show the remake. So I'm bringing you along. We're going to make a double batch today. Um, but I will be talking something new. Every time I make my triple butter bars, I use a different fragrance just to kind of keep it fresh. Um, and, but the recipe is the same. It's really heavy on cocoa butter, shea butter, and mango butters are the butters in this soap. It's very luscious. I love this bar. And then uh, I do a cream powder and a buttermilk powder is the milkiness in it. It's just, it's delish. I, for, it's like skin food. But anyway, let's get back to the fragrances. Today I'm using a bit of a tricky fragrance, um, but as I'm making this, I'm in the middle of the summer, but by the time this video comes out and the soap is cured, it's going to be early fall. So I'm thinking ahead, which is challenging for me when it's like melting hot outside to think about fall time, but uh, kind of gets me excited for fall. Anyway, <laughs> as you're watching this, it's probably already fall time. So I, it's called Sweet Cinnamon Pumpkin. This is from Be Scented, which, and they have, they have fabulous sales. Every time they have a, a fragrance go on sale, I check it out. Well, so I got this one on sale. It smells really good, and I've not soaked with it before, but it did come with some warnings. So I usually go and watch uh, Jen. She, if she uses a fragrance in a soap, I'll go watch her video and see how it performed for her, if she had any issues. It's very helpful, um, and then reading reviews and such. This one, uh, my bullet notes on the side here, um, I write down what the reviews say so that I'll remember when I pull it off the rack. It says it gets hot and slight acceleration and it discolors with a light tan. Um, and usually all the foody pumpkin scents, it, you're gonna have some discoloration. It's the vanillin in there. It, it smells so good, so it's kind of worth it. But anyway, the uh, gets hot in the mold, I'm gonna have to watch out for that and we'll talk about that and slight acceleration. So I will show you how I soap with a fragrance that uh, could potentially be a mover. So let's talk about the color. I use this every time I make my triple butter bars because it is such a buttery yellow. This is a uh, matte yellow oxide from Wholesale Supplies Plus, and I just love this color. So um, I'm trying to decide if I wanna do layers or swirls. I haven't quite decided yet. But uh, because this is could potentially be a fast mover, I've got to keep that in mind as I'm thinking about my design. So by the time I get everything pulled together and prepped and ready to go, I will have my design in my head. <laughs> so uh, I'll save that. We'll talk about it when we get there. So right now I've got to get everything ready to go and let's come back and make some triple butter right, bars. We are back and it's soap additives time. So I've got all of my oils and lots of butters in this recipe. I love it. It's got a lot of cocoa, shea, and mango, mango butter are what's in here, a big portion of the hard oils. Anyway, it's all melted up. I did not put the fragrance in here because again, this one might be a little fast moving. So we're gonna hold it off to the end, but now we gotta get the additives in. So I've got my kale and clay, my colloidal oats, my buttermilk powder, such a creamy lather, and heavy cream powder. So this, I think these bars are just top of the line luxury bar, I love them. So I'm gonna do two tablespoons each of all of these dry ingredients in here, and that is not too heavy of a load. This. Um, it's, you can add a lot of dry ingredients to your soap and still have it come out beautifully. So two tablespoons of each, this soap can handle it. And I am doing a double batch, so I'm gonna do double in everything. are back with our lye solution here which has tussa silk fibers um, cane sugar and sodium lactate and uh, the way that I'm gonna handle this fragrance oil that has the potential to be a fast mover um, it said slight acceleration so I'm just gonna proceed with caution and what I'm gonna do is I will get my lye blended in 
uh, get it up to emulsion, split it for the colors, and then add my fragrance after everything is blended to a very, very light trace. And then we'll just stir the fragrance in and kind of see how it's going. And so I'm planning a very simple design, one color. Hopefully I'll be able to run my hanger through and do a hanger, hanger swirl. So that's the goal for today with our triple butter. I do have my buttery yellow oxide here dispersed in a little bit of distilled water off to the side. So this is pre-blended, ready to go. And um, so once we get the fragrance in there, we'll just proceed with caution. I won't stir it aggressively. Um, and if it looks like it's hanging on, I'll run my stick blender through it. You know, it's one of those things you just have to feel, kind of get a feel for it. Anyway, all that being said, let's get to it. This is batch number one. been 24 hours since we made this soap 
it's beautiful. And let me tell you a couple of things. I did not have it stacked like this with the lid on as it was going through saponification last night. This did get very hot in the mold, which the uh, warnings and the reviews and stuff said that it would. It did indeed, but it didn't overheat out here on the counter. I just had it on my stainless steel table down in my studio, which is around 68 degrees down here. Um, and I had to keep them apart. When I had them together, they started getting very hot. And so I just sort of separated them, left them uncovered, and they did their thing. Uh, I'm pretty sure these went through gel phase. So this fragrance does get hot in the mold. It's just something to watch out for. But I had no issues. They look great this morning. They smell fantastic. So this sweet cinnamon pumpkin is a Bath and Body Works dupe and um, yum. This is fall all the way. So let's get these out of the mold and see how the swirls came out. Cause this was a little bit of a fast mover. We'll talk about that as we get into the cutting. back with Olga and let's get into our first loaf and I want to talk about the top of this loaf um, this is the first batch that I did and I blended the uh, light color more than I did the dark color and so this one was much thicker than this one and so that's it got a little sloopy on top which I think is beautiful the cup bars will look great but anyway I had two different consistencies on this first loaf uh, the second one, because I knew what I was working with, I was able to sort of factor that in as I was doing it. But, um, you know, the first time is kind of, this is the guinea pig. So let's see how those rolls came out. One of the things uh, with a faster moving or thicker soap is that you can be more aggressive with your swirling tool. Let's take a look. Oh, it's beautiful. Okay, because this light color was so thick, when I came in with my hanger tool, normally, let me see, I'll put this down. I do a one, two, three, move to the next loaf, one, two, three. Well, because this was thick and I wasn't worried about muddying it up because I knew the colors would stay separate, I went probably six times. I was like, woo, woo, woo. <laughs> so you can be much more aggressive with your swirling tool on thicker batter and you won't worry about muddying it up. If you have a very thin trace, which if you've watched any of my soap videos, you've seen me pour very thin and you have to be really delicate with your hanger tool because you'll just end up blending the colors rather than swirling them. But um, this white was getting pretty thick. This was a fast moving fragrance. Uh, it smells divine. And I would say if you plan ahead for it and you know it's gonna happen, I would definitely recommend this fragrance. It smells so good. Again, this is a Bath and Body Works dupe. Perfect for fall and winter. I'm so excited about this soap. So I did end up using a little titanium dioxide in the light portion because this says it discolors to a light tan. And I really wanted to make sure that this oxide color um, stood out. I didn't want them to be too close together. You know, if you're gonna go to the trouble to swirl the soap, you wanna see the swirls. So let's keep looking at the rest of these. Oh, that's pretty. And we're definitely gonna have some soapy patterns. All right, let's get into the center loaf of this very first uh, loaf that we got slab first slab when you have a um, a soap mold like I have where there's multiple loaves in it it's called a soap slab so gotta get my uh, terminology squared away this is one loaf out of a slab <laughs> but this was the first one that I poured where I was still kind of figuring out how this fragrance was behaving and oh it's beautiful these are just lovely 
boy oh boy. And the scent is just warm. Um, it's not sweet. It has some sweet notes to it, but not in a candy sweet, just a really sort of warm, gentle, sweet note. And I don't know if I'm smelling pumpkin. The fragrance said gourmand smell, so it is more of a um, winter squash smell than pumpkin, which don't let that put you off if you don't like winter squash. <laughs> um, it just has, I don't know, it has some depth. It's not just a sweet cinnamon scent. There's more to it. I really, really like it. And if you already know ahead of time that it's going to heat up and it's going to move fast, you can plan ahead to deal with that. That's one of the things that I really love about the reviews on different soap making websites or soap uh, ingredient websites when like Wholesale Supplies Plus, Be Scented, Brambleberry, Nature's Garden, all of those um, is people when they leave reviews, you can kind of get a feel for what you're in for and it's so helpful. So I recommend you read reviews when you're buying fragrances, definitely. All right, let's get into our first loaf off the second slab that I poured. And this one I blended more equally because I knew how the fragrance was behaving. So they were both the same consistency. Let's take a look and see how these swirls came out. It's kind of nice when I do double batches and I do one at a time because the second batch usually comes out a little better because I know what I'm dealing with at that point. We shall see. Oh, it's beautiful. I mean, I don't know if this is better, but I definitely didn't have any surprises with this loaf. And uh, that's always nice when you kind of know what you're in for. But this fragrance was definitely workable. Okay, this recipe that I was using for this soap, my triple butter, is about 50% hard oils and butters to 50% liquid oils and butters. And that does make a difference in how fast moving your soap can go. So if you knew you had a fast moving fragrance and you, you love it, you wanna work with it, um, you could try a recipe that was heavier in liquid oils, like heavy olive oil with a little bit of coconut oil and some butter in there, um, like maybe a 60-40 or a 70-30 liquid to hard. It will give you more play time. That's just how it rolls with soap. So um, a heavy liquid oil soap is going to move slower than a heavy hard oil soap. Let's get on to our next loaf here. Um, with that being said about hard oils versus liquid oils, there are variables within that. <laughs> so you can't just use that alone. Um, different oils have different sapon saponification values and they have you know, different um, elements to them that lend to properties in the soap. So for the most part, oh, these are beautiful, sorry. I'm interrupting myself, but check that out. Oh, that makes me happy. And again, this is the second slab. So both of these were about the same consistency, whereas the first one, the lighter color was definitely thicker. So loving that. So anyway, soap recipes, that's a whole other subject. And I do have a soap recipe video, but I will talk more about that in future videos. But uh, a harder oils in your soap recipe can mean a harder finished bar of soap but not necessarily. So don't necessarily think that it, you know, like my 100% coconut oil soap. Coconut is a pretty hard oil and it does make a very hard bar of soap. But if you cure properly a Castile soap, which is 100% olive oil, it will be just as hard. So there are variables within the oils. It's very complicated and yet it's not that complicated. I don't know. <laughs> I hope I'm not confusing the issue. The bottom line is this was a fast moving fragrance, um, but I did use my standard recipe, which is 50% hard oils, 50% liquid, and it was workable. So it was all good in the end. I'm super happy with how these came out. So I'm gonna finish cutting these loaves up and let them sit for a few hours. And then we will come back in with the stamp and the beveling and all of that. And I really hope you enjoyed today's video. I love making my triple butter bars every time. Um, if you ever get tired of watching me remake things you've already seen, let me know down below. If you want me to keep showing when I restock, I'd love to keep videoing it, but um, I'll take my feedback from you all. Thank you for joining me and I hope you have a wonderful day.